What's up, guys? Welcome to Ring the Bell. I'm the guy you thought got furloughed from Ring the Bell. My name's Joey, your dad bod demigod. I'm the person you can't get rid of even if you want to. I am the interdimensional she-hero, Moxie and Molly. And Joey, please go ahead and introduce us to our very special guest today. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege of introducing one of my favorite people on this planet. She is part pro wrestler, part referee, the Derby doll. Miss Lane Rosario. Hey guys, it's a pleasure to be on this show. Hi guys. So I am the Derby Doc Lane Rosario from the mean streets of the Flat Track, aka Flushing Queens, New York, and recently transitioned over to be a lady rep. Lane Rosario. Me and you have had mixed tag team matches together. We trained together. You've kicked my face in a number of times, but you got to tell us about this whole tryout you had as a referee this past summer. This past December, I was at the Performance Center for a tryout as a referee, and it was one of the best experiences of my life, as well as the most roughest experience. It was great. It was great to see all the coaches and go through what a full three-day try out with life with some of the top athletes in the world. This would be our first guest that not only has wrestled with Joey, but has also taken on yours truly. One of my favorite matches actually was with, with you because we just had so much fun with it. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, this week on NXT, we still got two women's matches and a whole segment dedicated to the current NXT champion. Surprise, surprise. But let's go ahead and jump on into this first match because it was Aaliyah going one-on-one with Miss Zia Lee. I feel like last night, Zia Lee is always amazing. But mm-hmm. last night, she had a quickness and an intensity that I just felt like she literally thought in her head, this could be my last match here, so I'm going to make it effing baller. And I would if I was the both of them because to a lot of these people, it's if I don't show up, is my job going to be at Jeopardy now? It's it's like, I'm going to prove to you that I deserve my spot and I'm valued as a member of this company. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you have to think about that, especially being those two, because honestly, if you look at the pecking order and the totem pole of NXT, they are the bottom. Aaliyah, I don't know, she's won maybe enough matches that I could count on one hand. And then Zia Lee's only really been like a Royal Rumble spot is like her notable yeah. thing. Everything you're saying is what was going through my head. And I was just like, Aaliyah, like, girl, we review you so much. You put in so much work. You've, you know, improved so much. And I just, I was like it, like sending all my vibes through the television. Like, I just hope you're here for us next well, week. But, and Zaylee as well. Well, what worried me um, going off of this thought process and jumping into the match was a one little side note, Aaliyah loved the gear this week, loved the top. Both of these women had the potential to build a storyline with this because we were talking about who attacked Zia Lee. Was it going to be Aaliyah's tag team partner, Vanessa Bourne? Was it going to be Aaliyah herself? And then it was just a throwaway thing at the beginning in the commentary of like, oh yeah, I guess it was Aaliyah who attacked her. Now they're going to have their match. And it threw everything out the door. I was kind of annoyed by that as well. Just like, you could have done so much. And that's what kind of like made my stomach stink. Like, are they throwing this away purposefully? Ah! That was my thought process with that too. It's like you built up such a storyline. As a fan, I'm talking fan's eye, not a professional. Fan's eye, I would have wanted to see where that would go and build off those two a little bit more storyline-wise. It had just a lot so of potential. Yeah. Joey and I said, he and I speculated, is it supposed to be Aaliyah? Is it supposed to be Vanessa? I mean, who knows? WWE he's done a lot of weird things they could have made it some other person you know what i mean but now no it could have been oksana in a wig we could have seen it again i didn't know it was me as far as the match goes i couldn't really think of anything notable other than what you were saying moxie where the like flurry of offense that we saw from zia lee she throws those kicks hard like <laughs> i don't want to take them. i wouldn't want to take Zaya's kicks either because that girl came out it reminded me of um and i hate using this reference like a like a street fighter type of game she came in like going for fatality on it like i'm going for blood on this i'm going to show you what i can do i don't think it's too too bad to even throw street fighter as a reference for her because they do have the very comic book style her come mm-hmm. up for her entrance now which i dig that a lot that's kind of really cool from people that we don't get to see too too often to a person that we see every single time we turn on wwe television the nxt women's champion charlotte flair one of the best promos i have 
ever seen for a superstar in a while. That was a good Charlotte Flair promo. <laughs> and I can co-sign with that because she did make it the full story of going from the past to the present and then the future of who she wants to like go through. And you see just how far her legacy has come on her own. Like there was no real mention of her dad in this promo. Mm -hmm. Nothing mentioned that she's a flair at all. Like she built her story based on her story. And what's funny is, is that when she brings up Mia Yim, that match as she talks about that they had her first ever televised match with her for i was actually there for that one so that was pretty kind of cool to see that footage it was just like okay this story made a bunch of sense from beginning to now i know it's kind of also really cool that they threw in that little nugget there of like mia yim was my first ever match because Honestly, if you look at both their stories as time has progressed, even Charlotte said in the promo, who would have thunk that we would be in this scenario now that we're in? It's alluding to the fact that there's going to be a big Mia Yim push. Um, I think that also might be teasing that we're not going to see Io Shirai take that belt off Charlotte Flair during that match. Finally, a Mia, Mia Yim push. Overall, that promo, I'm here for it. What I'm not here for is them now saying that Charlotte Flair is a raw superstar that's holding the NXT women's championship that's confusing me because shouldn't she be for all the brands now if she has nxt because they say that you can like basically put your title on the line with any of the three brands and if you're holding those as equals then she should just be a wwe superstar not a raw superstar because you're talking about now in that promo running through the girls of nxt so therefore would you not be now considered an nxt superstar if you wanted to go one brand I mm -hmm. kind of just shrugged that off as when they had the brand splits and the how most of the superstars are now not owned, but I'll just say that for lack of a better word, owned by the stations that they're contracted under. I'm just taking that as, you know, they have to say Raw Superstar because she's contracted under the Raw brand is just what I'm assuming. I don't think it's a dig at anyone else or any of the other brands. I mean, I guess so. Maybe they can do that because there's the whole USA Network versus Fox Network type deal. But eh, I think we're just right now digging for the sake of digging. <laughs> right. There's nothing else to do. Ain't that the truth. That quarantine <laughs> life is real, y'all. That segment was awesome, but we did get another match tonight. It was the first ever singles match for Miss Raquel Gonzalez, accompanied Who by the showed guy. up. She showed up. She came out to face T. Knox. Like, <laughs> with all the fires. With, I can't even put it into words. Like, I didn't think that girl could go, but she can go. Listen, two things. First, I think she, a little bit in her head, was like, okay, I'm basically a glorified manager. I finally have my shot. I'm Eminem. It's my one shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And then also, I feel like, don't get mad at me. Number two, she outshot shined Tegan Knox, not just a moveset, but an energy. And I am not okay with that. Tegan Knox, you're the face in this match and you had your lunch served to you. She's a monster of a lady. Like when she stepped in, in a ring, great way, in a great way. Oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, a great yeah. way. But she came out, she was Glamazonian. Like the Glamazon officially is now Raquel Gonzalez. Like just picking her up, she manhandled her. her that thing expression. with the arm. I was just about to say that. Now. It. Love it. Oh, like, oh, it was so amazing. Not only, like she did it once and we're talking about, but then she does, does it again with ease like. and yeah, then and the shoulder checks my god i was like she's gonna tear that girl's shoulder up and i'm I, i'm living for it and you know another thing just us as workers we know that you could have the world's best cardio and still get very blown up in the ring the other girls were the ones you could tell their chests were like you know what i mean their hearts were padding raquel gonzalez like she did, like you said, ease. She did everything with ease. Not even mm. like a glimpse of being fatigued at all. Like not at all. I, and she, I, I will be devastated if she doesn't make the cut because I am now excited and exhilarated to see what she can do. Honestly, in my heart of hearts, I don't think that that's going to happen to her. But last night, going off of what you said, like she wasn't blown up, but she also just held herself because it's one thing to go in there and be a competitor, but it's another thing to get into the ring and be a presence. And that's something that you can't train, you can't teach. 
but she went out there and she just has this natural like i'm huge i'm here to whoop your ass and now that she's got this direct character to play off of she can't do any wrong if she keeps going like this oftentimes when you have a lady wrestler that big they usually aren't even doing anything close to the amount of moves raquel was doing they're usually just i'm big so i'm just gonna you know, suplex you down or pull your hair down or choke you in the corner because I'm big and I don't have to do anything but, but more than that. She was like, not only am I big, I'm agile, I'm athletic, and I have this entire move set and I'm not going to be the traditional heel that just needs to pull your hair and choke you in the corner. I'm going to show you I can motherfucking go. 100%. She showed that, okay, I'm a big girl, but I'm a big girl that can move. And she should have been probably called the uh, irresistible force because that's what she looks like to me. If I were yeah. to name her, I would have given her that name. The way she moves in the ring, she is definitely like a force to be reckoned with. She doesn't just go in there and tear tear Tegan up. Like there was legally, you know that she has like a move set that she can do and not just hey, I'm just going to ground and pound you and that's it. Like you were saying, yes. you her up by her shoulder. That doesn't just take boot strength that is an athlete move it takes so much upper body strength to do that with one arm you know what i mean like it's just showing mm -hmm. she's freaking athletic i'm excited I mean, to see what this brings that brace only does so so much though right it's, it's picking someone up is picking someone up you really can't do too too much that's some brute strength right there haven't you hit me with a scoop slam before mm-hmm <laughs> yeah, so I know you can live, girl. <laughs> but we do got to talk about the end of this match, though, because yes. <laughs> unlikely alliances out of nowhere, um, Shotzi Blackheart runs down, takes out Dakota Kai, and then leaves Tegan to do a pretty... I hardly ever look at a roll-up and go, ooh, that's pretty, but that was a pretty roll-up that she had. Yeah, in. I'm so devastated to say this, but... After Tegan Knox's performance last night, low kind of low energy, I almost feel like teaming her with Shotzi is going to be a bad check mark for for in Shotzi's column. Like, first of all, Shotzi doesn't need to be teamed with anyone. Well, maybe this teaming is for Tegan Knox to give her a little bit of spice. It's just in today's climate, as in what we just saw happen yesterday. I don't think any assists are going to save you. I like her. I like her energy. I like the energy that she brings. And then if the crowd gets behind her, I honestly think the opposite. I think that they would be really cool as a team together because you can go off of Shotzi. Let's be honest, is a walking, talking, living, breathing video game character from like the coolest video game ever. And then you have Tegan who models herself after Captain Marvel. So by putting them together, you may amp up, Tegan's personality to make her back to being shiny. And yeah. She was even saying last night, if you came up with a tag team name for them, it would be shiny balls. And I was like, this is <laughs> awesome because maybe that's what she needs. Somebody to bring that shine and that energy and that fire that she had back to her. And if anybody's going to bring fire, personality and like the spunk, it would be shot. Too. Everyone could do well with more balls. Uh. <laughs> maybe just maybe they can throw both that together and some real fun to come out of this but if not it's gonna be staler than most aldi bread that was this week's nxt let's go ahead and talk about some aew real quick uh because aew gave us this week a whole lot of brit baker <laughs> Um, I want to say that I, you know, for a while I was not a fan, but as you know, I am becoming a fan and I'm glad in her promo to finally see something that isn't just talking about Tony Schiavone used to being a barista, but also the promo is great. And I also almost a little bit like the little shade of being a role model with that's like Bailey Karen's little gimmick right now. So I was very, I was here for that. Um, Britt Baker, we got a solid promo from her this week. I really enjoyed that one too. It wasn't my promo of the week because that's going to Charlotte. But I love what they're doing with Britt Baker here. I feel like it's more organic to her. Like I feel like that's more her personality finally shining through. And they mm. put her in her like home turf 
so to speak, of like the dental office, which I think probably to her maybe feels more comfortable. And that's why that promo felt so comfortable and real mm -hmm. because we all have a little bit of a mean girl in us. And for her, it's working. I secretly popped last week for the um, all the all the blood. And uh, I was just like, I'm about it. Maybe this is the fire she needed. Shouldn't take a broken nose to get you there. But maybe the broken nose gave her the fire because after she got hit, that girl was intense in that match, and it's like the fire got lit with the blood. You, hold on, I will say one thing. You can't say a broken nose shouldn't be what should get you somewhere, because no lie, a broken nose is what got us a triple threat main event at WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> True. yeah I do agree with you. Like, it should take a little bit more than, you know, a gimmick such as a broken nose to really put that fire, but I think it gives a natural fire. And I mm -hmm. also agree um, with you where you said that she felt a little bit more home at the dentist office, which is true because no matter what, you can't be prepared from being, you know, an indie wrestler who also runs a dentist to now being on TV in front of millions of people and equate those being so yeah maybe putting her back in her natural element has really helped bring out a lot of her let's talk about the match it was Britt baker versus the returning cassandra golden which cassandra in your own right you're amazing but this match was basically a squash so i'm sad for ms cassandra on that because i can't imagine aew bringing in talent isn't better than a squash match. Um, I'd like to see what she can do. She can really go. Uh, she went in her, I can't remember who her AEW match was against. I want to say it was Hikaru the week she did it. I also saw that she popped up on Impact Wrestling recently and had a really good match. Okay. So, yeah. But, I mean, there's uh, not much to say about the match. It was a straight up, <laughs> it was a straight up squash. Like, cause I'm just like, ha, 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 kick to the knee, ha, kick to the face, ha, er, teeth broken out, ding, ding, ding. Like that's, that's literally the match. Like, what are we supposed to say? Cool, Britt Baker, breaking teeth. I just want to hear you um, call back every <laughs> single match that we ever watched. <laughs> Britt Baker won in a squash, and that's about it. There was nothing on AEW Dark or nope. NXT UK nope. as far as female wrestling goes. Um, hey, Moxie. Hey, Joey. Hey, Lane. What is Hi. your boom blast moment boom. of the week? That Charlotte promo. That was Charlotte great. promo. Yep, yep. I love a good talker. As we all know, I can talk for days and days and days, and you both can co-sign on this. I love it when a promo is real, direct, to the point, and can literally make you mic drop after they walk away. So that's a mic dropper for me. Like I said, it was really hard for me to come up with a boom blast because like all of the circumstances in the back of my head. But I would like to say that Raquel Gonzalez as a whole was a boom blast, but especially her lift with the arm. I just think, I mean, it's so simple and it's something that made her, you could just tell she was like devastating. My boom blast moment is um, going to the one, the only Miss Shotzi Blackheart because she ran out and I had no joke went, Shotzi, like really loud and it scared my husband and that made me laugh. So that's my boom <laughs> blast moment. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's NXT and AEW review. So, um, hey, Moxie. Hey, Joey. Hey, hey LA. LA. Hey, hey. Where can people find, find you? you? Okay, so all over the social media world, I am at Derby Lady on Instagram and Twitter. And that's where I'm at most of the time. You can find me at Joey underscore Mayberry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can find me on all social media platforms at the, that's T-H-E-E, -E, Moxie Molly. And don't forget that DS has added one of my shirts onto our Teespring account. He's working on doing that for all of us. And please mm -hmm. don't forget to subscribe. Literally ring the bell. Yes. So you can get all the updates for everything on our channel. We did an emergency, like news and rumors. We're spilling the tea. We're about to do a live, so stay tuned. Come and see it. We have special guests just like the lovely Miss Lane Rosario every <laughs> single week that we're doing this quarantine pretty much. So we hope to see you throughout all of that. Everyone, be well. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Stay quarantined. Yes. <laughs>